Hi, my name's Ethan, and in this video I'll be showing you the basics of uploading your own Shiba model from start to finish. There should be a list here showing you all the steps I'm going to be going over in this video. So without further ado, let's begin. So, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to go to Pikipedia's Patreon, which I'll have a link to in the description. I'll make sure to have a link to everything that I'm about to say here. So, you're going to first want to subscribe to his Patreon for $10. So once you've done that, you should get a link to the Shiba Discord. And once you've done that, you can just open it up and go over to Announcements, and then go up to Pinned Messages, and if you look up there, there should be a link to the Shiba model. You're going to want to open that up and then download it there. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download Substance Painter. That's what we'll be using to actually color the model. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to go to Unity and you're going to want to download a specific version of Unity, Unity 2017 4.28. And once you've done that, you're going to want to download the VRChat SDK. So once you've downloaded everything you need, you're going to go over to the Shiba Public, which you should have downloaded. You're going to want to open that and you're going to want to go down to Shiba PC. Or if you want to upload a Quest version, you can do that right here. But you're going to want to open the one that has the Substance Painter logo right next to it. You're going to want to open that. So once you've opened it up, you should see the model right here. And this is where we're going to start painting the model. If you're looking at just wanting to change the basic colors that are already on the Shiba model, all you have to do is scroll down. And you should see three choices here. Light color, darker, and fill layer 2. These are just the three basic colors that are already on the model. And you can change very easily. All you have to do is go down. If it's two layers, you'll just have to press the second one. And then make sure you have properties open. And then you're going to scroll down until you get to base color. You're going to want to click on that. And this is where you can select the color you want to change it to. So you can move this around, change it to whatever color you'd like. And then you can go down here too to the darker color. And we can change that as well. And then we can go over to fill layer 2. And we can change the colors for that as well. Now let's say maybe you wanted the blue here to go up a little higher on the arm, or you just want it to be a different color on one hand. Now that's very easy. All you have to do is go over here, under the fur blend, and you're going to want to press new folder, and then add fill layer. You're going to want to click the fill layer and drag it into the folder. Click folder 1, right click that go over and press black mask and then you can go over down to the second layer here of the folder and go to base color and you can change that to whatever color you wanted to be changed let's say maybe you wanted his right hand to be red instead so then once you've changed the color you're going to want to go back to the first layer on the folder and now we can start coloring the actual hand here you can also go here onto the 2D side and you can easily color it right here without having to worry about coloring anything else. And as you can see, there we go. We have now changed the hand to red. Now you can do this with about almost anything on the model. Now let's say you want to change the collar because you want it to have your name on it. All you have to do is go over to collar, make sure that's open, open up collar part, go over to fill layer 18, right click that again and press add black mask then you're going to want to go over to alphas and type in fonts now substance painter has a selection of fonts you can choose from we're going to go with this and then you're going to want to go over to paint properties again and scroll down until you get to text and this is where you can change the text to whatever you want it to say you can have it say your name or just whatever you'd like now let's say maybe your name is just a little bit too big all you have to do is just change the size so it's a little bit smaller and it should fit in there. And then you can change the size over on the left here so it's a bit bigger. And all you have to do is line it up where you want it on the collar and click. And as you can see it shows up there. But it does seem a bit small so one thing you can do is you can press Control Z to undo the last thing you did. And we're going to change the size a little bit. And as you can see, it does show up a little bit bigger now. So once you're done with that and you are ready to export the model over into Unity, all you have to do is go up into File, Export Textures, and then choose the file you'd like it to go into. I usually like to create a new folder and then name it, open it, and then select the folder. 
and then all you have to do is just export. So the next step you'd have to do is opening it up on Unity. So all you have to do is go again to the Shiba public, double click on Shiba Inu PC. You should see a Unity logo right next to that. And then you're gonna create a new project and you can name that whatever you'd like. Make sure it is 3D and then create your project. And once you're here, all you have to do is press import and then it'll start importing all of that stuff into Unity. Once you've done that, you can go down to resources, open public Shiba, and you should see a little box right here. You're gonna click that and drag that up into here. And you can scroll in, and as you can see, you can see the model right here, but it it does not have the textures that we did in, U in Substance Painter. And how to apply those is you go over to folders, and then go over to the text where you exported the textures from Substance Painter. The ones you're gonna need for this are the albedo transparency, the spectral smoothness, and then the albedo transparency for the tail and spectral smoothness for the tail as well. You're gonna also need the emission as well for the main model. And all you have to do is just press control and then click on the ones you want and then click and drag those in. Once you have dragged those in, you're gonna wanna click on the Shiba Inu. It shouldn't have a little ball here. And all you have to do is just match up the textures that you dragged in. Click those. As you can see, it should say here the albedo transparency. You're gonna click that and drag it up in the albedo. And you're gonna do this with the spectral smoothness as well. And the last step is drag in the emission, which is where the color is. And as you can see, the name shows up for everything here. And then all you have to do is just do the same thing for the tail, just the albedo and the spectral smoothness. And there you go. You pretty much have your you pretty much have your model ready. Now all we have to do is just go over a couple more steps and should be on our way to actually uploading it to VRChat. So first you're going to want to go over and click on the model and you're going to want to click go down to armature hips and then you're going to click on left thigh and you're going to want to go back over to the Shiba public again and you should see something here called instructions. You're going to want to open that and it should open on notepad. All you have to do is just put in these numbers so they match up here. So where it has left thigh position, you want to make sure that this is the left thigh and position. You're going to want to either uh, control and copy and then paste it in. Make sure you have all the numbers in though, or you can just type it in as well. And then go down into rotation, which is the next one. And then don't mess with the scaling. You don't need to do anything with that. So once you have put in the numbers for the left thigh, you will move on to the right one. and make sure you have it make sure you're putting in the coordinates for the right thigh and not the left one and there we go once you are done with that you can close out of that and i'm going to go over a couple more things just in case you were interested in how to add other 3d objects onto your character and then you're going to want to go and double click the vr chat stk and this sometimes takes a while and can crash Unity. Don't don't worry if it does that. As long as you've saved all your stuff, once you load it up, everything will be back here again. So if you have any 3D models, and I have a couple, so I'm gonna go and let's say, maybe you wanted to add a guitar in and make sure you're in assets. Click and drag that in. And then if you have textures, you're gonna wanna drag those in as well. And as you can see, we have the guitar right here and we're gonna click and drag that up into here. And sometimes a lot of the models might be way too big. So what you can do is you can scale those. This is what the scale is used for, is change the size. So I'm gonna do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And uh, that looks about right. So all you have to do is then choose which arm you wanna put it on. I usually do the left arm. You just want to line it up, and over here there is a rotate option as well. Rotate it. So I usually have it for the guitar, I usually have it on the left side. Just angle it up so that it fits on the hand. And this may not look correct now, 
but in game this should work. And once you are done angling it so that it looks correct, all you have to do is then go to where it will, where it should go on the body. So since it's on the left hand, I'm gonna go down to spine, chest, and then keep going down until we get to hand. I'm gonna open that up. And then you wanna click the object and drag it in to where it belongs. And for me, it's the left hand. And then it should stick to the left hand here now. So in game, it'll follow where my left hand goes. This will permanently be on the model. So if you just wanted this so it was activated during an emote or a gesture, I will have a link to a video of that uh, below. Otherwise, if you just wanted to put a 3D model onto your character, this is all you would have to do. Now let's say we wanted to add the textures because we don't just want a white guitar or whatever object we we're using. All you have to do is go in the box, right click, create, and then go down to material, name the material. I'm going to name it guitar because that's what it is. And then you are going to drag the textures where they belong. As you can see, it's not applying it right away, but I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And make sure when you have a normal map, you go over to texture type and change it to normal map. So once you've done that, you're going to click on the material and drag it onto the model. And there you go, as you can see. The textures have applied to the model. Now let's say you wanted to add a some custom emotes. So if you've downloaded any uh, custom animations, I already have one downloaded. All I have to do is double click that and it should start importing it. So once it has done that, all you, have to, all you have to do is go over to the model again and then you're going to want to press Shiba Inu and you should see uh, emotes one through eight along with all of the uh, gestures as well so once you've done that you're gonna go over to the animations and you should see all you have to do is just drag in the emote to whichever emote here you want it to go to so let's say we want one to be one two to be two you know whatever emotes you want from one to eight so once you've done that that is all you have to do this should be pretty much it all you have to do is then again press the model and you're going to want to go down, all the way down, and you're going to want to go to add component. You're going to want to type in uh, avatar descriptor and you're going to want to click that. You're going to want to add a avatar descriptor to the model. Then what you're going to want to do is go and press VRChat SDK, which should be on the top here. Go to show control panel, click that, and then sign into your VRChat account. And once you sign in, it should say whether you're allowed to publish in worlds or av publish worlds or avatars. If you are not, you are required to play a minimum of what I've heard is around 24 hours. And the reason they do that is just for safety issues. If you don't have it, just go into VRChat, play for a while. You should get a notification when you are allowed to start uploading your own avatars and worlds. So once you're done with that, you're going to go into build. And if it does anything like this, you're going to want to go again, make sure everything is saved. All you have to do is just restart Unity. And as you can see, it saved everything here. And we're going to go over to build. And as you can see, it removed all the errors. And then you're going to want to go to build and publish. And if it happens to do anything like this, don't worry. Just go down to pipeline manager and detach that. Once you've done that, go to VRChat SDK, show control panel, go to builder, and then build and publish. If there are any other problems you seem to be having that I haven't gone over on here, then you, all you have to do is just go on to the Shiba Discord and then there should be a channel called uh, Shiva Creation Help, and there should be some people there that can help you out there. Otherwise, if you're looking for help on this video, I honestly don't know, uh, I almost don't know anything about Unity. If there's anything on this video that you're having problems with that I didn't go over here, I can't help you, I'm sorry, but there are some people over on the Shiba Discord that can help you out there. But once you have done that, then you should get this screen here, you can name your avatar whatever you want, so, and you can add a description, but I usually don't. And then if, if you're doing any of this kind of stuff, you can select that. And then for the sharing option, uh, you can either set it to private or public. I would usually recommend private 
if you're just wanting the model to be yours and you don't want anyone else to be using it unless you have cloning on then I would recommend just putting it on private if you want people to use whatever model you're about to upload then you would set it to public once you're done with that you can press this here but before we do that let's say you wanted to change maybe you had a custom picture for your avatar or you just want to change the angle the camera's at all you have to do for that is go over to scene scroll back a little bit and here's the camera that, that we'll be using for the picture for your avatar now you can move this around wherever you'd like but let's say maybe we want uh, a custom picture behind him or we just maybe wanted just a custom picture over here all we have to do for that is go over to game objects 3d objects here and then go down to plane and all you have to do is change the scaling to 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 for now and then you're going to change the rotation the first rotation to 90 and of course move this back a little bit so it's not directly on the model and then as you can see it's a it's a bit too small so you can change the uh, numbers around if you wanted to just go simple you can change it to a solid color so then when I get rid of this as you can see the background is just one solid color otherwise if you wanted a custom image behind them all you have to do is go over get a uh, picture of something so once you found an image all you have to do is click and then drag it into unity I usually bring it to assets and once that is here all you have to do is click and drag it onto the plane and as you can see it is a little bit dark so how we change that is we go over here to shaders on the right click on standards and you're gonna want to go down to you're gonna want to go down to unlit and then textures as you can see that brightens up the picture back there a bit more and then all you have to do is line up the camera how you want it and then you can go over here and this is what it should look like in game and once you are satisfied with how it looks all you have to do is then press upload and then Unity will do the rest to upload it to VRChat. And once you're done, you just all you have to do is press OK, and you are done. And I'll load into VRChat right now and show you how it looks. So once you are in VRChat, all you're going to want to do is open up your menu, go to Avatar, and then you should see the model that you have uploaded to VRChat. And there you go. Easy as that. And yeah, as, as I was saying, you know, you can't hide this. This is permanently shown, but the video I'll have in the description will show you when you use gestures, uh, it'll show the model instead of it always being present like this. But if you enjoyed the video and liked it, found it helpful, uh, feel free to like and share with anyone you think would be interested in a uh, Shiba model. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. You have a nice day.